All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 38. This is just really a continuation of our previous video, lesson 37, where students are gonna continue multiplying a whole number and a mixed number. Again, they're still gonna be using the distributive property rather than some sort of standard algorithm that us old fogies may have learned back before Common Core. So let's get started on this. So the directions say fill in the unknown factors. So the idea is, um, and of course I just totally got there, uh, got in the way here. Okay, so we have these blanks here. So it's eight times four and four sevenths. So really, I want you to think of this as eight copies of four and four sevenths. Well, if you have eight copies of four and four sevenths, that means you're gonna have eight copies of four. And so that means right there, eight copies of four. And we're gonna have eight copies of four, four sevenths. So the eight is gonna go right there. And that is what they're looking for. So if we kind of, in the same vein, look over here, this says we're gonna have nine copies of seven and seven tenths. So that means we're gonna have nine copies of seven and nine copies of seven tenths. Now parents and teachers, if your students say, well, what about, can we have nine copies of seven tenths and nine copies of seven? Uh, so essentially reversing these two right here. Are we allowed to do that? And the answer is yes. Traditionally though, we wouldn't, and traditionally, um, we put it in the we put it in this order. Uh, but because addition is commutative, and like five plus three is the same thing as three plus five, that means you can have nine times seven plus nine times seven tenths. You can reverse the order, and you would still be okay um, because you can do that with addition. Now we're gonna just multiply using that distributive property. So this says we have six copies of eight and, seven, uh, eight and two sevenths. So that means we're gonna have six copies of eight plus we're gonna have six copies of two sevenths or six times eight plus six times two sevenths. And then, well, six times eight is 48 plus Six times two sevenths is 12 sevenths. So parents and teachers, you may need to refresh your student's memory that six times two sevenths is six times two sevenths, all right? So this thing, you might need to um, do a little bit of a refresher course on that. <clears throat> and then up here, we can simplify this fraction, because that's a fraction greater than one. So we know that that can simplify to one and five sevenths. And once again, parents and teachers, make sure your students understand how we connect from here to here. It's super important. And then of course, that simplifies to 49 and five sevenths. So two more opportunities to practice. Um, we've got four times 20 and eight twelfths. All right, now you'll notice our numbers are starting to get big, huh? And so don't let your students get freaked out about that. So four times 20 and eight twelfths. Remember, another way to think of this is four copies, four copies of 20 and eight twelfths. So four times 20 and eight twelfths. Well, that's gonna be four times 20 plus four times eight twelfths. And so four copies of 20, or four times 20, that's 80, plus, and then four times eight twelfths. Remember, that's gonna be four times eight twelfths. So that's gonna be 32 twelfths. So parents and teachers, make sure your students get that step right there, that's, that's key. And then again, similar kind of a thing, the 80 stays the same, Nothing you can do with it, but over here, we need to simplify that. And that is probably something that a lot of your students would not be able to do in your head. So down here on scratch paper, 
you might say, okay, well, let's see, 32 twelfths. Well, that's the same thing as 12 twelfths plus 12 twelfths. So that's 24 twelfths. And then we have 8 twelfths more. So if we add 12 twelfths plus 12 twelfths plus 8 twelfths and add those up, the numerators, we need to get 32. And that's how I did that, right? And so 12 twelfths and 12 twelfths, those are, each of those is a 1. This counts as one whole, this counts as one whole. So that really is equal to, so 32 twelfths is equal to 2 and 8 twelfths. Where did I get the 2 from? Right here. 1 plus 1 is 2, and the 8 twelfths is left over. So that equals 82 and 8 twelfths. All right. Of course, 8 twelfths can be simplified, but the focus in this lesson is the distributive property. So I'm not going to worry about simplifying at this point. If your students want to, or if you as a teacher feel like your students need to practice simplifying, by all means, go ahead and do that. The only tricky thing about this number down here, question F, is the fact that the whole number is, in, is behind the mixed number. So you might want to remind your students to use the commutative property and reverse those. Now we're ready to multiply. That's going to be 12 copies of 30 plus 12 copies of 3 hundredths. Your students may or may not be able to do this in your head. This is a good opportunity, parents and teachers, to teach your students about that trick. Remember that thing of we learned it in an earlier module in fourth grade. Leave off that zero. 12 times 3 is 36. And then times by 10. And 36 times 10 is 360. So this equals 360 plus, and then this is 36 over 100. And actually, we might as well just finish it. That's 360, 36 hundredths. Oh, I can't. I'm squeezing it in there. Okay, there. Um, and that wraps up that one. Now we're just going to practice with some word problems. So Brandon is cutting nine boards. Each board is four and five-eighths feet long. So that's going to be nine times four and five-eighths. So that's going to be nine times four plus nine times five-eighths. So that's 36 plus. And remember, parents and teachers, right here, your, your students may need to go 9 times 5 eighths is 9 times 5 eighths. And then give us 45 eighths. But if, if they can skip this step right here and go straight from looking at this and immediately saying, oh, that's 45 eighths, more power to them. And that's going to be 36 plus. And this is going to be 5 and 5 eighths. So parents and teachers, you're probably going to need to pause the video and let your students work that out and make sure they understand that. Now what's the next step? It's going to be 41 and 5 eighths. One last problem. <clears throat> I chose this one because this is actually kind of tricky. The two numbers. It says Rocky the Collie ate three and a quarter cups of dog food each day. For two weeks, how much dog food did Rocky eat in that time? So you see two numbers, right? You see this number, and you see the number two. But really, that number two is not really the number two. It's really 14 days. So really, the problem that we're going to do is 14 times three and a quarter, which is 14 times three plus 14 times a quarter. And parents and teachers, I'm going to let you finish this problem off. But it's basically, uh, the tricky part is the fact that this, the number is 2, but really it's 14, because it's 14 days. Because it says 3 and a quarter cups of dog food each day for two weeks, so that's 14 days. And that wraps up Grade 4, Module 5, Lesson 38, multiplying a whole number and a mixed number using the distributive property.